Hello friends, you probably already know that this is primarily a Zelda-focused channel, because Zelda will always be my favorite series. But fun fact, I play a lot of Splatoon. A lot. Recently, during an online match, I played against this team, who all made their in-game names match those of the four champions from Breath of the Wild. I loved that, thought that was a fun bit of camaraderie. It did not stop my team from crushing them, though. I guess I'm Calamity Burger now. I extracted some visual data from the Guardian's memory. Yep, no doubt about it. Hyrule Castle after Calamity Ganon has been revived. Don't worry, they got to redeem themselves in the rematch. Anyways, as we were playing, I noticed something. Their Mifa was using the bow, and I thought, shouldn't Rivali be the one using that? And then this simple thought just got my mind going. If the actual characters were playing Splatoon, hypothetically, what weapon kits would best suit them? So I wrote up a little Twitter thread about it, but then I decided, hey, this is such a fun idea that I'm gonna convert that little thread into a video, just for fun. So expanding on that thought, let's go through some iconic characters from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and what weapons I believe they would use in Splatoon. Just a few ground rules I set for myself. Despite the fact that the sages and champions actually share weapons between games, I decided that I would have no repeat weapons in this list. While Daruk and Yonobo both use the boulder breaker in their games, I gave them different weapons here to best suit their respective personalities and abilities. So, no repeats. I'm also specifically using weapon kits from Splatoon 3 for consistency's sake, and that means I'm not just taking the main weapon into account here, but the kit as a whole. I wanted to ensure the sub and special would also reflect the characters just as much as the main weapons do. Alright, that's enough of that, let's hop right into it. So let's start our list off with Link. This may be a bit on the nose, but I went as straightforward as possible here and assigned him the Hero Shot. Hero Shot is arguably the most balanced weapon in the game, and it is made specifically for, well, the hero of Splatoon 3's main story mode. I think that Link would be one of those players who wouldn't shy away from trying a bunch of different weapons, just whenever he felt like it. And frustratingly, perhaps, he would be proficient with literally anything you'd give him. But the hero shot would be his main, that he'd always be able to fall back on. Link's gear would be balanced, rather than focusing on one specific ability. But I'm certain he'd have comeback back in there, which gives you a stat boost after respawning, and drop roll to help him dodge out of sticky situations and avoid getting spawn camped. Mifa is next. This one was a toss-up for me initially. She uses a trident in her own game, so I initially wanted to continue the try theme. I considered try slosher, but the feel of the weapon just didn't fit, and that was most important. So after some thought and testing weapons out, I assigned her the Splatana Wiper Deco. This is a lightweight weapon that is fast and precise, keeping opponents at bay with constant quick jabs. The Wiper Deco is paired with beacons as a sub, which I felt was perhaps the closest we could get to Mifa's grace in Splatoon, since it helps allies get back into the thick of the battlefield faster by providing jump points. As far as her gear would go, she'd also customize her outfit with quick respawn and a bunch of swim speed up. Next up is Daruk. Initially, I was hoping to give him a kit that included a big bubbler to mirror Daruk's protection. However, none of the main weapons in those kits felt very... Daruk, so I ended up landing on the Dynamo Roller. This is a slow and heavy melee weapon that hits like a ton of bricks. The Dynamo comes with Tacticooler as a special, and while it doesn't offer 
protection, per se, it is a special that gives the entire team a brief stat boost, which reflects Daruk's encouraging demeanor. This guy is a team player, and is happy to support his allies. The Dynamo itself is one of the most outright powerful weapons in the game, but all of that strength comes at the cost of speed. It feels very Daruk though, and I genuinely think giving a roller weapon to a Goron was simply fitting. As for his gear, I think Daruk would prioritize having abilities like Ink Saver and probably wouldn't have any speed up chunks in play at all. For Rivali, the choice was obvious. He gets the Tri-Stringer. It makes too much sense. It is literally a multi-shot bow, just like the Great Eagle Bow. This is a long-range weapon that requires a lot of accuracy to use proficiently, but you just know that he'd be zipping around with this thing and generally causing a lot of disruption to his opponents. The Tri-Stringer's kit comes with Toxic Mist, which slows down enemies caught in its area of effect, and Killer Whale as the special. This just fits our eagle-eyed archer to a T, using a toxic mist to ensnare his opponents and then finishing them off with the powerful but precise killer whale would definitely be a tactic that he'd employ. Naturally, you'd just know he'd have all pure gear loaded up with intensify action, except for one slot, which he'd use for respawn punisher, just out of spite, jerk. Not our last character, but our final champion is Urbosa. I had a hard time deciding on this one, but I landed on Aerospray RG. I feel the gold matches the Gerudo Chief's style quite nicely, but more importantly, the Aerospray is a short-range weapon with a quick fire rate that is still fairly balanced. Urbosa would definitely be one of those opponents you'd want to keep away from, as she would make quick work of you as soon as she got close. The special here is the Destructive Booyah Bomb, which feels to me like a decent stand-in for Urbosa's Fury as well, as anybody caught in the explosion's range is pretty much done for. She'd have a balanced set of gear abilities too, probably with intensify action in there somewhere to reflect her elegant combat style, and likely a drop roller and special charge up in the mix too. This video initially began with just Breath of the Wild's champions, but I figured I'd throw in the Tears of the Kingdom sages as well, just for fun while I was at it. So first up is our boy Tulin. Even though the bow may be the obvious choice, that felt like low hanging fruit, and and the reflex didn't feel right. Given Tulin's penchant for headshots, I decided I wanted to give him a sniper weapon, but not something heavyweight like the E-Leader. So I settled on the Gootuber, which offers better speed and mobility compared to other weapons in its class. With the Gootuber, Tulin would fall into a support role in his squid squad, hanging back and picking off foes from afar. The Gootuber also comes with torpedoes and tenta missiles, both of which are essentially projectiles rather than bombs, which suits the little guy. Tulin's gear would probably include quick super jump and haunt. Yeah, he's a cute little dude, but he will remember you if you splat him. As for Yonobo, as tempting as it was to give him the dynamo like Daruk, one, that's boring, and two, that's against my own self-imposed rules. Besides, Yonobo just doesn't quite feel as heavyweight to me like Daruk does. After testing out a bunch of weapons, I decided to give Yonobo the slow but hard-hitting S-Blast. Its mid-range but powerful strikes feel right in line with the reach that his attacks offer in his own game, and the blaster's splash damage means he doesn't have to hit with quite as much precision to still deal damage. But but a direct hit is going to be devastating. The S-Blast comes with Reef Slider as its special, which mirrors his flame rolling sage ability, allowing him to charge forward and release a big explosion for massive damage. Inobo definitely has Object Shredder in his gear, because let's be honest with ourselves, we just use this guy to break rocks. Sidon is up next, and I gave him Octobrush Nouveau. Sidon just feels like the confident one who would rush headfirst 
into danger with a smile on his face. This one just felt right to me, given that you can use the brush to sprint ahead at full speed. Its weight and speed feel fairly in line with Sidon's own, especially his capabilities in water. This also gives him beacons, like his sister, and Inkstorm as his special. I'll be honest, I don't find Inkstorm particularly useful in anarchy battles, but hey, that fits in with the fact that I also don't find Sidon's ability in Tears of the Kingdom all that useful either. Despite that, Sidon would be a brazen teammate, who would come to the aid of and defend his squad, even to his own detriment. As far as his gear goes, he would definitely have a lot of swim speed up, as well as ink resist up in there. As for Riju, she gets the Gluga Duelies. This may feel like an odd choice, but hear me out. I wanted to give her something from the Duely class to reflect her double swords, and the built-in dodging capabilities suit her fighting style. I was initially hoping to give her a kit with Triple Ink Strike, which could work similar to her Lightning Strike ability, but none of the weapons with that special felt very Riju to me. So she can get Booyah Bomb just like Urbosa, a powerful focus focused special that she can lob at her enemies. The sub here is Splash Wall, which she can use to defend her allies, which I think suits her considering her protective nature when it comes to her role as Gerudo Chief. As for Riju's gear, she'd probably have a fairly balanced set, with special power-up taking up a few ability slots. And last, but not least, the big baddie, Ganondorf himself, who I think would use Splatana Stamper. This is a heavy antagonistic weapon that hits hard, and is surprisingly quicker to wield than it looks. A quick charge up and the Stamper can one-shot you in close quarters. Yeah. We've all played against this kind of stamper player, the kind that is just relentless, killing you over and over. That's him. The special is Zipcaster, which briefly transforms you, acting similar to how he transforms into Demon King form during the final battle. As for his gear, he'd probably load up on a sub resist up, haunt, and cap it all off with last ditch effort. On the battlefield, he would be a force to be reckoned with. And those are my picks for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom characters, and what Splatoon kits I think they would use. You know, hypothetically. Hope you all enjoyed this different sort of video, and let me know your thoughts on these choices down below in the comments. Or if you'd pick something different for these characters, let me know. Anyways, that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching, and stay fresh. Thank you all so much for watching, and an extra big thanks goes to my supporters across both Patreon and here on YouTube as a channel member. So thank you to Greymage, Brenda, Tetra, Justin, Midnight, Naomi, and Bunny, as well as the names of which you're seeing on screen here. Thank you all so much for all of the support, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye